excuse me. <laughs> well, that's authentic. No, okay, JK. No, oh, okay. Hi, friends. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I am here to share with you how to build an authentic personal brand. Now, the reason that I chose this topic, it is because personal brand, it is really powerful and important. It can help you develop a reputation or an impression on social media or on other online platform, and it can help you in terms of your career and all your business growth. So it's really important and it's like a big topic in recent years. But the word that I want to highlight here is authenticity. So everyone can create a personal brand through creating a website, designing a really beautiful resume, have a really pretty theme or color code for your Instagram feed. You can do all of that that's like a very nice packaging in front of yourself but if your brand is not authentic if it is not real if people are not able to relate to you that's a problem because you see whether you are a lawyer or a business coach whether you're trying to brand yourself for your career or a business there are a lot of people doing similar things like you do so let's just take online coach for a profile I'm just gonna search up business coach very quickly on my phone and these are all the profiles that popped up. So people can easily brand themselves as a business coach and start posting tips about business, or personal branding, like what I'm doing right now. So anyone can do that and package themselves very prettily and beautifully. But ultimately what makes you stand out, it's the message that you are sending out there. It's how you make people feel. And when you are authentic, you bring out the story of your life. You bring out what you bring to the table. So you, you bring out what you bring to the table and you show people who you really are as a human. And as humans, we are feeling-based creatures. As You could be really technical or logical, but you still have feelings. And we relate to people who we feel real, who we feel that stories we can resonate with. And that is why authenticity is really important when it comes to personal branding. Over the past few months, I actually rebranded myself from being a lifestyle blogger from my lifestyle blog of 10 years into an online business coach, more so of an Asian girl boss figure on social media because of my change of niche. And what I'm most proud of in this transition is that I've had several people coming up to me telling me that they find that I'm a really authentic person on my social media. And to me, that is a huge win because it is a part of my strategy to be authentic on social media. Okay, so I mean like I'm not like faking myself as an authentic person, but the reality is like growing up, I've always hate people who are really hypocrite. Like I hate people who say something at the back and then they, they act really differently in front. And that was some, it's just me. You know, I just don't like, oh my God, my earring just fell off. <laughs> Okay, it's back. I'm looking pretty again. That's awkward. But anyway, so I was saying that I really hated people who were like hypocrite and like I want to appear as real as possible. It's just who I am and I think it's a very huge part of who I am and I wanted this to be one of my values on my personal brand. And the fact that like people are coming up to me telling me that when I'm consistently posting more businessy, personal branding, content strategy kind of stuff, it really means a lot because it's it shows that it's working. And so today I want to share with you a few steps or tips on how I'm able to achieve an authentic personal brand on social media. The first thing you want to do is to be clear of what you want to be known for. Ideally, we should have like three, two to three themes that we go with um, that should be like the pillars of your content. And at the same time, also think of like the personality, personal traits side of you that you want to be known for. So what I would do is I would take out a piece of paper and list down all of the things, anything that comes up to your mind and like just dump them all on the paper. Don't think too much first, just list them all out. And then after that, just ask yourself, you know, based on these topics, what content can I talk about? Is it what I want to be known for? Will it be beneficial for my business or my career? 
Ask yourself questions like that. These questions should help you to rank them in order in terms of their strength on how much content you can create and how beneficial is this topic for your career or your business. And once it's done, ideally you should pick like top three topics that you want to focus. This is actually a strategy that I learned from my favorite online mentor, Vanessa Lau, who is also my university friend. Um, so she shared about this 3x3 three three method to decide on your content pillars and your values. Basically, you decide on three pillars on all the themes of your content is going to be about and also the three values for your business. And for me personally, I've drilled down to know that my personal brand is an Asian girl boss who is fun and authentic. So that is the brand that I wanted to go for. So these are the three content pillars that I have and these are the three values that I have. Being clear of these pillars and values, it is very important for you to be able to strategize your content as you are moving forward. So once you are done with deciding these pillars and these values, the next step is to create content. One way to still focus on your professional brand the things that you want to be known for professionally. Um, for example, for me, it's entrepreneurship, it's content strategy, it's personal branding. These things should come up in a higher ratio than your more personal life value-based stuff. So I personally like to make sure that my content is two-part professional stuff and one-part personal stuff. So if you look at my YouTube, my Instagram, you would notice that I create more content about entrepreneurship, about personal branding, about content strategy. I create more things of this, but I also make sure that I create content, maybe share some Instagram stories or a vlog that is more personal. I still do that, but it's just in a smaller ratio. Now, the reason that we want to make sure that we have this ratio is that we want to prevent ourselves from oversharing too much about our personal life. We want to make sure that it doesn't blur away the main theme, the main personal brand that we are trying to go for. So, for example, myself, right? I am a business coach and my theme focuses on entrepreneurship and on content stuff. And recently, I've been I've been making a lot of my own food. I've been trying to eat healthy and I've been taking a lot of photos of these meals, but I've been holding back and posting them on my Insta stories because I don't want people to be confused. Like, is she trying to be a healthy food blogger, like a health influencer, or is she actually a business coach? I followed her for her business content. Why is she sharing all of this? So we want to prevent that situation. I know it's hard, it's hard. Maybe what you can do is to share all that food photos or the many personal stuff that you want to your close friends. That is an option, definitely. But the ones that you are putting out in public, make sure that the ratio is lower than your content, your main content pillars, your main professional themes that you want to be known for. The next tip to be more authentic on your personal brand is to not be afraid to be vulnerable or funny or even embarrassing on your social media. I know we all want to look successful, we want to look professional, we want to look like we're an expert and good in stuff. And that is true, that should be why you're branding yourself. What is that noise? I hope it doesn't affect. But anyways, we all want to look good on social media. That is, that is the whole purpose why we brand ourselves online, right? We want to make sure that people have a good impression about us. But remember what I said earlier, people connect with you better when they have feelings toward you. And when you are able to share your vulnerability or show like the funny side of you, people find it more personal. You find like, oh, she's actually showing me a part of her life and she's showing me her mistakes, her failure, and she's trying to connect with me. Okay, so let's just put this into perspective. Imagine that you are a high school kid and you are attending math classes in school, right? There are two math teachers. Teacher A is pretty is a really professional teacher. She is really good in math, um, but she's kind of like emotionless, strict, and that's pretty much it. And then teacher B, she's also good in math, but she is also really personable, like she remembers your name, and she occasionally shares funny things or her personal life stories in class. Which teacher would you favor? 
for me personally, I would prefer teacher B. I would remember her better because she shows us more of her life besides just being an authority figure. And that is the same thing with personal branding. You can, you can go ahead and just portray yourself as a really successful, really expert, really happy and good person, but that is not 100% of who you are. And if you are able to show your funny, vulnerable, less so professional side of yourself, people would be able to resonate with you and connect with you better. Of course, there are always risks that comes with it, especially in certain industries where maybe weakness is not beneficial for the brand, then you have to be careful. So before you be vulnerable, before you swear, before you share offensive things on social media that may seem really true to your personality and yourself, ask yourself, will this be beneficial for my personal brand, for my business growth, for my career growth, or will it harm it? Always make sure you ask yourself these questions. Whether or not it's for your personal branding, I think that should be something that you should always ask yourself before you post something on social media. Because things can go really crazy just by one tweet. We've seen a lot of examples in recent years and we should really be careful on what we post on social media. The next way that you can build a really authentic personal brand is through utilizing features like Instagram stories or live. I personally enjoy using Instagram stories a lot to be more personal because Instagram stories only last online for 24 hours and it, took, it takes away the pressure that, oh my god, my content's gonna be there forever. I need to make sure that it's perfectly edited. It's nice. It removes that pressure, so it allows me to be more natural and funny and sometimes just a little bit more embarrassing because that I know that the content's not gonna be there forever. As for Instagram Live, I personally also just started doing it and I still get nervous and awkward on it. But what I realized is that Live streaming, it's different from like making a YouTube video. A YouTube video, you are allowed to edit what you say, cut things off, move things around to make more sense. Whereas for an Instagram Live, it's life. You have no choice but to keep moving on. And I find that on stream and on live, people seem more authentic and personal because that's the real them. We know that it is unedited and that's who they are. So it really helps you to appear more authentic just because you don't have the option to edit. I recently saw this quote on social media and I really love it. It says that marketing is like asking someone out on a date and branding is the reason that they say yes. Branding is really important. It shows people who you are, what you can do and what your story is. And that's why I think it's so important to tell the right story, to tell an authentic story so that people buy the real thing, so that people get to know the real you and like you for what you do. And at the same time, like I was saying earlier, authenticity, being real, it is going to help you stand out in the marketplace compared to like the hundreds and thousands other people in your industry. So yep, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe if you love this and check out these two videos if you want more girl boss or entrepreneurship stuff. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!